Win again. Now will you take out the trash? Love you too. Hey everybody, Eugene Morris here from the Brotherhood of Gaming.com. Street Fighter 2 is one of those games from my childhood. Now, I don't remember exactly when or where I officially got into the series. I'm pretty sure it was my late cousin Big Will that did it. I remember spending a lot of weekends at his house playing the hell out of this game. Needless to say, I was hooked on the gameplay, the characters, the whole package. So much of my gaming childhood revolved around Street Fighter 2. My first issue of Nintendo Power featured Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I watched the Street Fighter movie with my dad, and I got plenty annoyed with all the updates that came out afterward. That pretty much became a tradition for the series, for better or for worse. I did, however, draw the line when it came to that animated series. Hey, I gotta have some standards. Not surprisingly, millions of other people were also influenced by this legendary game as well. This included my wife and her brothers, who were also fans of the game growing up. In fact, a couple years ago, me and my wife went to a Halloween party as Ryu and Shen Li. Best Halloween ever. So with the purchase of my Nintendo Switch, I, not surprisingly, was drawn to the console exclusive Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. I remember when this came out a couple years ago, and now I finally have my chance to give you my opinion of it. So what does this new final edition of Street Fighter 2 has to offer? Here's my review of Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. Normally I would talk about the game's story here, but then I realized that the story doesn't apply all that much to Street Fighter 2. Now all the characters in this game have their own reasons for participating in the World Tournament, and there is a lore to explore, but that's really best left by the comic books. There is no dedicated story mode in this game. If you play and beat the arcade mode, you'll be awarded a couple of screenshots revealing your character's aftermath, and that's about it. So let's just get to the gameplay aspect of this game because, in all honesty, that's really the meat and potatoes of Ultra Street Fighter 2. Now essentially, this is a new paint job to the classic Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which was the ultimate rendition of the original Street Fighter 2 series. This game introduced super combos as well as fan favorite Akuma. The gameplay of Street Fighter 2 is preserved here as it feels familiar and fun. You face off against your opponent, Choose your rounds, your time limit, and it's off you go. You have your six basic attacks, ranging from light, medium, and heavy. Performing a maneuver with the D-pad in correlation with the appropriate button press will allow you to execute a special move. When you land hits, you build up your super meter, which will allow you to do a super combo. This will cause a great deal of damage to your opponent if you can nail it, and it can even help you record a victory. Now, compared to newer entries in the Street Fighter series, the gameplay style here may feel a bit antiquated, as it doesn't have the bells and whistles that are in a game like Street Fighter V. But luckily, the core gameplay of Street Fighter II was just so solid. The game just feels great to play. Now, the game features 19 total characters for you to choose from. This includes two newly added characters that were not in the original Super Street Fighter II Turbo. One is Evil Ryu, the dark version of the classic hero with all his dark Hado powers, and the other is Violent Ken. This is pretty cool, as I do believe this is the first actual appearance of this dark evil version of Ken in a Capcom-made game, as he made his debut in SNK vs. Capcom SVC Chaos. These two are the final challengers, as it were. And they are broken as all get out. What I mean is these two guys just feel way overpowered as compared to the rest of the cast. Now while it does make them fun to play, there is a bit of a problem with that when you go online. Along with your standard offline modes, you of course can go online to battle with warriors all over the world, and I did. Nintendo's online has always been a bit iffy, but I was able to get some quality connections when I found people to play against, and oh boy, did I get some nice ass whoopings when I did. You know, it's funny, when you're playing the arcade mode, you go right along, feeling good about your skills, and then you face actual real human opponents and quickly get put in your place. 
But what I found out is that overwhelmingly I ran into evil Ryus and violent Kins all over the place. Because these are literally the best characters in the game. Almost makes the rest of the characters feel a bit left in the dust, I must say. Anyway, for what it works, the online is functional. So I guess that's what's most important. Other features here include the versus mode where you can fight against the CPU or fellow player in a local battle. Buddy battle where you can go two on one with a CPU or a buddy. Damn, look at this chaos. Training where you can hone your skills, a gallery with a collection of wonderful Street Fighter art throughout the years, and a color editor, which really allowed me to let my artistic side shine through. Hey, I even made my own Shadow Lady. But the one gameplay mode that really sticks out is the Way of the Hado, which puts you in the shoeless feet of the game's main character, Ryu. So this is a first-person feature in which you take over as Ryu, and you fight a legion of Shadow soldiers with his powers. To do so, you use the Joy-Cons, because Nintendo loves their motion controls. Ironically, the graphics for this mode uses the look for Street Fighter 4. Not sure if that means anything, just an observation. Anyway, using the Joy-Cons, for me, felt a little hit and miss for some reason. I swear I was holding it right, but it seems I can only do uppercuts. Now, I'm not the most coordinated person in the world, my wife can attest to that, but this feature, while a neat idea, felt more frustrating than anything else. Sometimes pushing a button is just easier, you know? The classic tunes of Street Fighter's past are all here, but redone in a more laid-back style, which I really enjoyed. When it comes to fighting game music, more often than not it's fast-paced, high-octane. But it's always enjoyable to hear a game that takes things in a different direction. This game's music has a more chill vibe, which helps it stand out more. While I have heard better renditions of, say, Ryu, Chun-Li, and Guile's theme songs in other games, what is here does work nicely. It's an exclusive sound for an exclusive game. The first thing we noticed when booting this thing up were the new upgraded visuals. While the Street Fighter's art style traditionally always had a cartoony look, and while it's pretty much the same here, I feel that the graphics lean more toward the comic book flavor, which here looks very good. I think that's why Street Fighter's cast always look like they could fit into the Marvel Universe, as they too are over-the-top heroes with superpowers. Now, like I mentioned before, this really is the original Street Fighter 2 series with a new polish, and that unfortunately retains the fewer frames, so the animations are not as fluid as compared to other games. Speaking of which, if this style does not appeal to you, well, you always have the option to adjust the look and sound to the original format. But hey, I already own the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, so if I personally want that look, I would just go there. So for this game, I prefer the new style. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game a buy or a sell? Retains the Street Fighter 2 gameplay with a modernized look. Fun if broken new characters to play. Passable online with an unnecessary first-person feature. Now I do enjoy this game, because I enjoy Street Fighter 2 so much. All the fun of this series is beautifully retained, and it's just as fun solo as it is with two players. But the thing is, this is still a reissue of an older title, and the original price of around $40 does seem a bit much, since you can actually get the 30th Anniversary Collection for cheaper. So if you do have a Switch, and you are a Street Fighter fan, while I do recommend this game, I would recommend waiting for a price drop. Fortunately, it does seem like Capcom does frequent sales on the Switch, so if you see one and Ultra Street Fighter 2 is marked down, then I say go for it. It is always nice when the Nintendo Switch gets third-party support. While the system is not nearly as powerful as others, especially now that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are available, allegedly, it doesn't mean that the games here can't be fun to play. Street Fighter 2 was a mainstay on my old Super Nintendo device. And the fact that this series still has a place on Nintendo does give me a great deal of joy. This new Ultra Edition is a game I can still pop in anytime and play, either by myself, online, or with my missus. Because there's always room for Street Fighter. Before I go, I'd like to do a little signal boosting if I can. One of my favorite YouTubers, Oliver Harper, is doing a documentary on Street Fighter 2 called Here Comes New Challenger. It's currently on Kickstarter, and if you're interested in this project, seeing the light of day, you might be interested in giving this project a little backing. Meanwhile, as for us, you've been watching the Brotherhood of Gaming.com. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to visit our Teespring store to purchase some TBOG merch. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember, keep on gaming.